This episode is sponsored by US repeat supporter Connie. Thanks, Connie. You're awesome. Hello and welcome to Film Pro Productivity, the podcast that helps film professionals and other creative people to live a more focused, effective and ultimately happy life. My name is Carter Ferguson and this is episode 44, The Law of Success in 16 Lessons, Part 5. In whatever walk of life you are in, success is a universal theme that will be of interest. This is the fifth of six interconnected episodes about Napoleon Hill's powerful book, The Law of Success in 16 Lessons. And if you've not heard any of the previous shows, then I'd strongly advise you to go back and check out episodes 40 through 43 first before listening to this one. That way you're just going to catch this in context and in the order in which it is meant to be heard. My aim is simply to give you a glimpse of the power that lies within its pages, but there is an order to the lessons that he presents, and starting here, as I say, may just cause you some confusion. For streamlining purposes, I don't always identify sections of the quoted text in this mini-series, but for the record, much of the content is either my interpretation or direct quotation of Napoleon Hill's own words. The main change that I make is in neutralising the gender every now and again because I want to make the lessons as accessible for today's audience as Hill intended it to be in 1928. As you will discover a little bit later on, Hill was in fact all about equality and inclusion. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. It's through cooperation rather than conflict that your greatest successes will be derived, Ralph Sherell, unquote. Lesson 13. Cooperation. Hill concluded after his 25 years of research that it is literally true that you can succeed best and quickest by helping others to succeed, and that the top of the ladder of success will never be lonely as you can't help but bring others with you. He also explains in this chapter that cooperation must exist between your conscious and your subconscious mind so that they may work harmoniously in your favour through the use of auto-suggestion. As we've heard before, this is a form of hypnosis or self-induced psychological suggestion which individuals use to guide their thoughts, feelings or behaviour. We often hear people using affirmations in this way as part of a morning ritual, perhaps, and I'll be looking into affirmations in an upcoming episode, probably later on this season, I think, so I won't spend too much time on this here today. In effect, what Hill wants us to understand is that it's a proven fact that the subconscious, or what he calls subjective mind, can be affected by the conscious mind. When you impress any idea on your subconscious mind, you do so with the aid of this system. And when your subconscious mind works out a definite plan to achieve any desire which you impress it with, that plan is delivered back to your conscious mind through this same system. This is the first essential part of the lesson in cooperation, and a new angle on an old idea which we have previously discussed in the earlier lesson on imagination. The second essential element of cooperation is the more obvious one, that those who unite or group themselves together for the purpose of attaining a given end do so in the spirit of cooperation. In the first lesson, this was discussed in terms of the master mind principle, and in the second, we referred to this sort of cooperation as organised effort. As we learned there, power is the organised effort with which we will gain success. We'll hear more about the power of cooperative effort and see the important part that it plays in the development of power in the final lesson. But for now, I will say that the four most important factors that enter into the process of organising effort are concentration, cooperation, coordination and energy. Personal power is achieved by developing, organising and coordinating the faculties of the mind and it is the first step to be taken in the development of the potential power that is available through the medium of what we know as allied effort, cooperation, or group power. 
True success in life, Hill says, cannot be attained except through peaceful, harmonious, cooperative effort. Success cannot easily be attained single-handedly or independently. Now, I'd love to move on, but, but I'm going to repeat that one more time because it's such an integral part to the message that Hill is putting across in, in this book here. True success in life cannot be attained except through peaceful, harmonious, cooperative effort. Success cannot easily be attained single-handed or independently. If you analyse power, he continues, no matter where or in what form it might be found, you will find organisation and cooperation at the back of it. We're living in a world in which the law of survival of the fittest is everywhere in evidence. Those who are fit are those who have power, and their power is organised effort. Even if it doesn't work, there is something healthy and invigorating about direct action. Henry Mither, unquote. Hill gives time in this lesson to make absolutely clear too that we must become people of action if we are to achieve our definite chief aim. Action, in the sense that the term is used in this lesson, comes in two forms. One is physical and the other is mental. You can be very active with your mind while your body is entirely inactive or you can be very active with both body and mind. Give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. Abraham Lincoln, unquote. And I use that quote as Hill wants us to know too that there can be as much action in preparation as in execution. And as the one putting together this podcast, I can vouch for that. These six episodes alone have taken an absolute age to prepare. But without my research, my rewriting and my hopefully intelligently concentrated accurate thinking on these topics, it would be a very thin and fragile series indeed. Hill warns that we cannot become people of action if we are not fit, if we are addicted to substances, or if we don't eat properly. And I'm skimming over a lot of this here, but there is one thing he highlights which, again, I will be tackling quite soon in another episode. Worry. There is another enemy which you must conquer before you can become a person of action, he says. And that is the worry habit. Worry, envy, jealousy, hatred, doubt and fear are all states of mind which are fatal to action. He raised these points earlier in the 16 Laws series, I think when he was discussing self-confidence. And I recognise that when I'm worried, it affects my work. I'm not sure about envious. Maybe I was envious at some points in my life. Jealousy perhaps kept me back. Hatred, maybe. Doubt definitely kept me back. And fear, of course, fear. These are all things which I think at some point in my life and career have affected me and stopped me from moving forward with action. Corrie Ten Boom talks about this. She says, Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. I really have to drive this episode on, but as a final word on cooperation, Hill wants us to know that the world pays you for what you do and not for what you know. And he takes this further saying, what the world really pays you for is what you do or what you can get others to do. Someone who can induce others to cooperate and do effective teamwork or inspire others so that they become more active is no less a person of action than the one who renders effective service in a more direct manner. He also talks of motivating forces and killing procrastination and a hundred other things, again and again returning to the earlier advice which he's given on achieving our definite chief aim in life. If you plan to attain the object of your chief aim through the cooperative efforts of others, you must set up in the minds of those whose cooperation you seek a motive strong enough to ensure their full, undivided, unselfish cooperation. And I'll add to that that this will be made far more achievable when you have developed your pleasing personality and enthusiasm skills which were discussed in earlier lessons. Coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Henry Ford, unquote.
Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Lesson 14. Failure. Failure is a detour, not a dead-end street. Zig Ziglar. Unquote. Failure is inevitable and it's a great step towards the right direction, so Hill suggests we embrace it and replace the word failure in our minds with the term temporary defeat. Moreover, he says, let us see if this temporary defeat is not usually a blessing in disguise for the reason that it brings us up with a jerk and redirects our energies along different and more desirable lines. I looked at this in my in between episode, Why It's Okay to Give Up, and again in my first show of this season, Best Laid Plans, and Hill here validates much of what I say there. I won't spend too much time on his words here today, but let's have a brief look at his angle on how we deal with failure, as this is an important lesson in the law of success. Strength grows out of resistance, Hill reminds us. And we shall learn in this lesson that sound character is usually the handiwork of setbacks and temporary defeats, which the uninformed part of the world calls failure. When one door closes, another opens. But we often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the one that has opened for us. Alexander Graham Bell, unquote. Hill starts this chapter with a list of seven personal anecdotes that demonstrate defeat and recovery of newly opened doors and opportunities, and in the end he admits that I am glad to have experienced so much defeat. It has had the effect of tempering me with courage to undertake tasks that I would never have begun had I been surrounded by protecting influences. Defeat is a destructive force only when it is accepted as failure. When accepted as teaching some needed lesson, it is always a blessing. He continues, In view of what I have learned of the value of enemies, if I had none, I would feel it my duty to create a few. They would discover my defects and point them out to me, whereas my friends, if they saw my weaknesses at all, would say nothing about them. And how telling that is. Have you ever considered this? An awful lot of us are stuck in a dead end of work or life problems due to our inability to recognise or accept our flaws and it's our friend's politeness or fear of upsetting us which is stopping them from helping us. Again and again here, Hill points out that which I've not spoken aloud myself but which I have given some consideration to just in my mind over the years. Zig Ziglar says, if you learn from defeat, you haven't really lost. Hill's embrace of the phrase temporary defeat is so overwhelmingly complete that he craves it, but warns that we must have considerable courage too to look upon it as a blessing in disguise. Defeat talks to us in a language all of its own, he says, a language to which we must listen whether we want to or not. He points to the great men of his day who have battled their way to the top despite their failures or temporary setbacks, and we could level comparisons of our own here too, I'm sure. My favourite example of this is J.K. Rowling. In 1995, all 12 major publishers rejected Harry Potter. A year later, a small publishing house, Bloomsbury, accepted it and extended a very small £1,500 advance. The book was published with only 1,000 copies, but in 1997 and 1998 it won awards from Nestle Smarties Book Prize and the British Book Award for Children's Book of the Year. Today, or at least the figures I could find on the internet, today Rowling has sold more than 400 million copies of her books and is considered to be the most successful woman author in the United Kingdom. I could cite many other examples here. Bill Gates, Stephen King, Henry Ford or Thomas Edison. It's hard whilst you're in it, as life just wears you down. But you can take heart in seeing that others have made it ahead of us. As I said right at the start of this six-part miniseries, 
success is a very profound and interesting thing because the line of demarcation between success and failure is so slight that it is often hard to see where one ends and the other begins. Be thankful for the defeat which many call failure because if you can survive it and keep on trying, it gives you a chance to prove your ability and to rise to the heights of achievement in your chosen field of endeavour. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Lesson 15. Tolerance. Hill makes two significant statements about intolerance at the beginning of this lesson. First, that intolerance is a form of ignorance which must be mastered before any form of enduring success may be attained. It's the chief cause of all wars. It makes enemies in business and in the professions. It disintegrates the organised forces of society in a thousand forms and stands like a mighty giant to the abolition of war. It dethrones reason and substitutes mob psychology in its place. Second, intolerance is the chief disintegrating force in the organised religions of the world where it plays havoc with the greatest power for good there is on this earth by breaking up that power into small sects and denominations which spend as much effort opposing each other as they do in destroying the evils of the world. And I should add here that Hill is very careful in these pages not to talk about any one religion. He tends to talk about supernatural forces and uh, beliefs and greater powers and things like that. He doesn't get specific on any one religion. He's, He's very, very careful in how he words these things. But I thought I'd quote that opening directly to you there as he is very specific and likely at the time was incredibly forward thinking about all of this. He's saying, don't practice prejudice or racism. It's ignorance and it's a barrier to success. Just see the best in people and in situations. Focus only on your goal and the good of all. We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Martin Luther King, unquote. It's obvious that anything which impedes the progress of civilization, such as intolerance, stands as a barrier for the individual, and anything that clouds the mind of the individual and stops his mental, moral and spiritual development impedes also the progress of civilization. We become not a melting pot, but a beautiful mosaic. Different people, different beliefs, different yearnings, different hopes. Different dreams. Jimmy Carter, unquote. So, as is typical in this book, this whole lesson details a very significant number of examples and studies of how intolerances in religion, in politics, in race relations, and in differing cultural or family backgrounds are the direct cause of wars and disruptions. And Hill's point in all this is, I think, that intolerance is an unforgivable element that disrupts one of the cornerstones of his 16 lessons. Without tolerance, our organised efforts will fail because the harmony that is required will be disrupted beyond repair by intolerance. Organised effort and the actions of cooperation between us as we work towards our single chief aims in life will be destroyed by intolerance and accurate thought cannot be relied upon if intolerance is present within it. Hill ends this lesson with an essay on intolerance. These are the final words of that essay. I am hoping I will find only human souls, brothers and sisters all unmarked by race, creed or colour when I have crossed the bar to the other side. For I shall want to be done with intolerance so I may lie down and rest an eon or two, undisturbed by strife, ignorance, superstition and petty misunderstandings which mark with chaos and grief this earthly existence. Here endeth lesson 15 in the Law of Success in 16 Lessons. So to sum up on this episode, let me just recap on today's three lessons. Lesson 13, 
cooperation. This is the implementation of cooperation between yourself and others who are going to help you to get your goal. Cooperation must also exist, though, between your conscious and your subconscious mind so that they may work harmoniously in your favour. Lesson 14. Failure. Fail and be happy. Be happy that it is bringing you one step closer to success. Failure is inevitable and it is a great step towards the right direction. Don't let it bring you down. Simply replace failure, remember, with the words temporary defeat. And lesson 15 was tolerance. Don't practice prejudice or racism. It is ignorance and it is a barrier to your success. Just see the best in people and situations and focus only on your goal and the good of all. Your call to action this week is to embrace your failures and consider how they have brought you closer to success, taught you invaluable lessons and made you a person of character. Gather from them the strength to continue on and rewrite your negative feelings about the experiences and rename them as temporary setbacks instead of failures. Success is a very profound and interesting thing because the line of demarcation between success and failure is so slight that it is often hard to see where one ends and the other begins. Remember, no one has the right to brand you as a failure except yourself. Nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal. Nothing on earth can help the man with the wrong mental attitude. Thomas Jefferson, unquote. The next episode will be the final show in this six-part series within the series documenting the law of success. After that, we will be back to the usual style of shows. Next time, though, I will be recapping on all that has come before and introducing Lesson 16, The Golden Rule. I'll end today, though, with the very famous quote of Mr. Hills, which I riff upon quite often here. You are the master of your own destiny. You can influence, direct, and control your own environment. You can make your life what you want it to be. Now take control of your own destiny. Keep on shooting, and join me next time on Film Pro Productivity. The music that you can hear right now is Adventures by Ikumitsu. You can view the show notes for this episode on the official website, filmproproductivity.com. You can follow my personal accounts on Twitter and Instagram at fight underscore director, or you can follow the show's official accounts on Twitter at filmproprodpod or on Facebook at filmproproductivity. Please support the show. Continue to support the show by subscribing, spreading the word, tell people about it, and do leave me, if you have got a minute, an awesome review. 